everybody, my name is Andrea Tarowski and I run a Whitening Pro Academy teaching course but also a tooth gem training course as well. And I'm going to go over common tooth gem mistakes that I see from students. So this is in no way talking about any particular student, just these are harder for students or tooth gem technicians to really grasp. So I hope that this video helps you to think about it and you might notice or think to yourself, oh I've been placing tooth gems but this isn't working, this isn't working. I bet these are one of your mistakes and I'm going to teach you guys how to correct them. So the first mistake I see, which is the most common, is leaving too much bonding and or composite behind the tooth gem and then curing it and then it's oozing out from the sides. So you apply it to the tooth gem or the tooth, whatever application method you had learned, you place it on the tooth and then you light cure it. As soon as you light cure it, that sets everything in place. So you need to clean it away before you light cure it. If you go to take away the extra composite or bonding material after it's light cured, you can't. Unless you're working in a dental office where you have access to high speed hand pieces to basically drill away the extra because that's what the curing light is all about. It bonds it, it sets it to the tooth. So the best thing to do, and I teach this inside my tooth gem training course, is you want to place that tooth gem but then make sure to take a micro brush or whatever tool you prefer to use some use a wax tip applicator um, some ev ev even use tweezers because it's like pointier to get around I prefer a thin micro brush I will hold that tooth gem in place and then clean around it with a thin micro brush and then cure it after that you would be amazed how much extra is there because you don't want it oozing off from the sides it's meant to be under the tooth gem so do not forget to clean it off because as soon as you like cure it you're done like you can't do anything about it unless you want to physically remove the tooth gem by hopefully trying to pop it off but the whole point is that they don't come off easily right so that's a very common mistake i see another mistake i see is not curing that tooth gem or the bonding agent long enough so you would apply etch the bonding agent the composite and then the tooth gem what I see is people might quickly cure the bonding agent for five seconds and then they move on right away to placing the composite on the tooth gem and then they place it and then cure for another five seconds. It's not going to hold. It might hold for that appointment if you're lucky and that's just luck, but I would think it wouldn't hold very well but it's going to pop off within a day, within a couple weeks, it's not going to last. Do not use those keychain curing lights. There's not enough power to them, it just won't work. It's kind of like using really cheap batteries from the dollar store versus using batteries from somewhere else that you paid five times the price for. The dollar store batteries are not gonna last you nearly as long as the ones that are more expensive, but you wanna give your clients the best product, right? It just takes an extra few seconds to cure properly. I suggest 20 to 30 seconds with that curing light after the bonding agent and then after the composite to cure the tooth gem to the tooth. Another thing I see is a tooth gem technician not explaining things to the client properly. You want to explain everything to them so they know what to expect and make sure you understand their expectations. Do they want a tooth gem on five teeth? Do they want three tooth gems on the same tooth? Do they understand that it could pop off in two weeks if they're picking at it or they're eating you know, sticky candies or they're not brushing well? Or do they understand it could be permanent until they get it removed. Let them know that. Somebody might be coming to you because their best friend has a really nice tooth gem and they love it and they've had their tooth gem for 10 years, but they didn't know that they had it placed at the dental office with a permanent cement. That can happen too. You're not using a permanent cement unless you're working in a dental office. You are using bonding agent and composite material, which in my opinion is better than permanent cement, it's just because you know who wants it permanent, but they might want it to last a couple years or they might not. They might say to you, I thought this was going to last a couple weeks. Get this off of me right now. Well, they can go to the dental office to get it removed anytime. So make sure they know that and make sure you tell them to brush it really well. I find a lot of clients are afraid to brush the two gem and then they wonder why stain starts forming around it. That's plaque. That's plaque that has then caused stain. So 
I would say, you guys, though, that those are the three most common mistakes. I hope this helped. If you are looking to become a tooth gem technician, I do have a tooth gem training course. Check me out at whiteteethschool.com. I do offer teeth whitening training, but then a separate tooth gem training course as well. I would love to have you inside the course. I will see you guys very soon. Let me know if any questions.